Hey everybody, my name is Christian Hyatt. I'm a managing director here at RISC 360 and I help oversee our ISO 27001 practice. This is to continue our ISO 27001 Explain series where we cover every element of the ISO 27001 control framework and try to give you some insights into what to expect if you're trying to implement a program or achieve certification. Today we're talking about Control Objective 11.2 which is around physical security of equipment. Um, for many companies out there, this, especially if you're in the cloud or you don't have on-premise uh, physical equipment, some of this stuff might be less relevant to you. But remember that for ISO 27001 purposes, it's important that you still have a policy around what you plan to do around physical equipment. So Control Objective 11.2 has nine controls, and we're going to cover off on all nine of those uh, right now. So what you'll see on my screen here uh, on the left-hand side is the ISO 27001 standard itself and the nine controls. And on the right-hand side, you see RISC-360's example information security policy. Now remember, if you're a uh, RISC-360 client uh, and we're helping you with ISO implementation, you'll have access to all of our policies and procedure templates. So you'd have access to this document and we'll work with you to help customize it as we go. So let's go ahead and cover off on these controls and talk about them just a little bit. So control 11.2.1 is about equipment uh, setting and protection. Um, this is a pretty easy control, um, especially if you're outsourcing your, your data center equipment. Um, what you really want to think about is where, uh, how do you physically uh, secure equipment where it rests. If you're outsourcing it to a colo or if you're outsourcing it to a cloud data center like uh, AWS or Azure, you really want to put uh, contractual agreements together and focus on the governing agreements of how they're going to physically uh, protect that data. That will be a pattern for all of these controls. But if you have physical uh, equipment on site, you want to think about where you're putting that equipment. Is it in a server room? Is the server room locked? Do you have zones? Uh, so for example, do you have a trap door uh, in between a hallway and the data center? So if a door was breached, they're still in the room. So it's really about your zoning practices. For most of our clients and most of you watching, you're probably in the cloud or outsourcing uh, data center services to a colo. So again, that means that you want to do that, um, manage it via governing agreement. Uh, control 11.2.2 is around supporting utilities. Um, and this really is talking about um, managing equipment and protecting it from power failures. So that will manifest itself in a couple ways. So if almost uh, anyone with a physical location, even if you're outsourcing your data center services, you want to think about things like your connection to the internet. And if you have a power, a power outage or even a, a quick power glitch, how do you prevent the entire wireless internet from going down, for example? So things that you'd be looking for is like backup power, um, UPS systems. So UPS is a device that will give you about 15 minutes of protection. It's a physical device that can go uh, in your server closet to protect uh, protect your routers and your uh, wireless access points. If you have an on-site data center, then you might actually need a backup generator or um, or some other type of um, uh, redundancy when it comes to power and electricity. 11.2.3 is around cabling security. Uh, again, if you have something on-site, you just want to keep those cables secure to make sure someone can't install devices uh, that could uh, impact security, like some kind of man in the middle attack. You would also want to make sure, uh, more practically, that the cables can't be unplugged accidentally or uh, even on purpose in some case if there's malicious actors. So keeping those in a secured area. Um, again, I keep mentioning this, if you're outsourcing this, these are things that you want to manage in your agreement. Uh, if you have a contractual agreement with a cloud service provider, make sure they're doing these things. Control 11.2.4 is around equipment maintenance. Um, so what I like to think about with equipment maintenance is what is the process to make sure that any equipment that you have um, is, isn't, uh, doesn't have dust all over it where it would cause a power outage. Uh, maybe it's patched. Uh, so think about things like physically maintaining that device as well as making doing a, a spot check from time to time to make sure that no one's unplugged it or that no one's installed a malicious USB device and is trying to take data from it. Um, so from an audit evidence perspective, you could uh, consider putting together some kind of checklist where maybe on a weekly basis you have your team uh, checking out your data center closet or your server closet where your equipment's stored 
just laying eyes on it, make sure everything looks good and, and doing some routine maintenance on uh, your physical equipment. 11.2.5 uh, is around removal of assets. Uh, and, and that is really, uh, if, if you're transporting any type of uh, server equipment, so if you're doing an office move, what would be the process to do that? Um, some companies do need to take physical tapes offsite. That is very rare these days if you're doing like backup tapes or taking backups to like a vault at a bank. I've seen clients do that. Um, or just practically, if you're, if you're moving uh, from one office to another office, uh, you need to think about what your process is to remove assets and, and uh, relocate them. 11.2.6 uh, is security of equipment and assets off premises. Um, again, that is uh, most relevant to folks transferring equipment. Uh, it could be also mobile devices, teleworking sometimes uh, falls into that. So if uh, uh, probably the most relevant thing for, for most companies in the modern environment would be like laptops that still counts as equipment. So if you're taking a physical laptop home every day, uh, what are your policies and procedures and governing, um, governing documentation around acceptable use? Um, so should employees be uh, required to store laptops, mobile devices in secure areas? Don't keep them in your car. Um, lock them at all times. Uh, so physically securing those laptops and, and, and other devices, that'll be your biggest impact for most organizations. If you're storing other types of data or physical equipment offsite somewhere, uh, you still want to consider like if, uh, how is that relevant to your organization and how do you want to physically secure those devices. I have seen companies that will uh, again like store offsite backups, physical offsite backups, and you might want to store those in a safe or a bank or, or something like that where um, you, you feel confident that it's physically secure. Where I've seen organizations get in trouble is maybe they have like an IT admin that stores backup tapes at a closet at their house or something like that, and uh, you will have uh, exceptions if you're trying to get certified and that's not a best practice. But again, most of our organizations that we work with aren't doing that. That's kind of a thing of the past, mostly in the cloud these days. So the most applicable thing is your laptops, your cell phones, any kind of mobile devices that your organization is using. 11.2.7 uh, is around secure disposal of equipment. Um, so any physical equipment that you have, most relevant for most organizations uh, will be would be laptops. That's the thing that turns over the most. So if a laptop or a device uh, reaches end of life, what is your process to dispose of that? So uh, what you'd be looking for from an audit perspective is evidence that you've decommissioned that device, that you've uh, cleansed the device, and that uh, you've typically using some kind of secure disposal company to, to rid yourself of that device and make sure it's disposed of um, in a secure manner. So if, uh, common examples are companies like Iron Mountain uh, or others that will take the device and issue a receipt stating that they've disposed of it uh, securely. I also know there's like charities that will, will do this as well, that will take the device, uh, DOD grade wipe it to make sure that the data is completely off of that device and then uh, give it to like a school or something like that. And in some organizations choose to, uh, you know, do, do this stuff themselves and then uh, delete the, delete everything off the device and physically destroy it. We even have one client that has like a, a machine that will physically destroy the device uh, and then kind of keep a log of that because the auditor is going to be looking for some type of audit log evidencing that you've disposed of that device and that you've kept a record on like your asset management uh, tool that that mobile device has in fact been uh, deleted and uh, destroyed. Also think about uh, servers or infrastructure. So if you do have any physical infrastructure, um, even if it's like a wireless router, um, maybe it's Cisco gear like a firewall or edge or endpoint devices, something like that uh, on your local area network and you're rotating those out, you want to follow those same type of procedures where you're securely disposing of that stuff. You don't want to just have a process of throwing it in the trash or throwing it away or giving it away or letting employees take it. You need to sec securely dispose of those devices. 11.2.8 is around unattended user equipment. So uh, the easiest thing to think about there is uh, uh, doing spot checks on employees' desks. Are they leaving their laptops uh, unattended? Um, that, that's the most common one by far. Just kind of do people, and this kind of falls into the next one around clean desk policy. But 
uh, are people living their equipment unattended uh, as an employee base? Again, this comes back to servers. Uh, if you have a server closet or you have a data center on site, are you locking that? Uh, is it secured or is it just unattended where anyone could walk into kind of your communication closet and unplug your router and, and your devices that might access the internet or even install something malicious that would intercept traffic? So uh, you want either that to be attended or secured in some way. Uh, control 11.2.9 is uh, clear desk and clear screen policy. That is exactly what it sounds like. Um, do you have requirements that employees have to have maintain a clean desk uh, where they don't have files or documentation present that might be sensitive? They don't have laptops unattended that aren't locked in their screen, screen up. And that's really about user behavior. Uh, very straightforward, clean desk, clear screen policies. So that is the nine controls around control objective 11.2 around equipment. As you can see, a lot of that uh, may or may be varying degrees of relevance to your organization based on your setup. If you have on-prem device or on-prem infrastructure versus a co-location or cloud storage, if you're using laptops and mobile devices versus desktop devices, there's a little bit of variability that your organization is going to need to consider. So as you walk through each of these controls, Think about how they would apply to you and what elements of your organization these would impact. Um, if this is helpful and you like this kind of series, uh, check, continue watching this. And uh, I hope these resources are helpful. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks.